try to make this concise, even though that's not my nature. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we we can do this as a question and answer, yeah. or okay, is that good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the first question. You say in your book, Biology of Belief, that by giving the energy-based environment its due, it provides the foundation for the science and of and philosophy of complementary medicine and spiritual wisdom of the ancient and modern faiths, as well as allopathic medicine. Could you explain what you mean by that, and, and how does that unify complementary medicine, spiritual wisdom, and allopathic medicine? Okay, um, the first thing is to recognize that each one of these modalities, the complementary, allopathic, and spiritual, are based on a philosophy of how life works, okay? The philosophy that the allopathic community holds is that life is the uh, consequence of a Newtonian matter-based machine. So when they look at the body, it's strictly based on matter. That's all it is. Uh, if you understand the, the, the physical pieces, you'll understand why life works or how it works, and then you can make physical pieces called drugs and fix it. So their, their whole premise is it's a physical machine, and energy is not relevant to the function of the machine. Okay? Right. Then we go to complementary, and complementary talks about the fact that uh, its philosophy says is that energy goes through the system, you know, the chakras and the, you know, the all that meridian stuff and all that, right? So it's an energy-based system, which is not the same as the the material-based system of Newtonian. Okay. Uh huh. And so it, it emphasizes that if you just understand how this vehicle, the body, works, you really should understand the nature of the energy flows through the system. That's what complementary is all about. And then you get to the spiritual, and their philosophy is somewhat akin to the to the to the complementary. But the complementary still has a bit more of the. It, it's actually a mixing of like the physical and the energetic. It still uses some allopathic understanding in it as well. And then you get to the spiritual based one. It says, well, forget the whole physical concept and just get on with the nature of that there's an energy running this mechanism, a spirit, and uh, an invisible moving force that is running this mechanism. If you understand that force and, and manipulate that force, you can manipulate the machine and make it better or worse, depending on what you do. Okay? Right. Three philosophy. First one, allopathic, is Newtonian. The spiritual one is basically just fully, fully quantum. And the complementary is in the middle because it has both the the quantum and Newtonian nature. So what's the difference? The, you know, a sentence that um, what's the difference between Newtonian quanta uh, and quantum mechanics or physics? And this is a, you know for a reading audience, it's nice to remind them that the word physics and mechanics are synonyms. So if quantum physics, quantum mechanics are the same thing, why that's relevant to their awareness is. While we may be talking physics, what it's really talking about is mechanisms. <laughs> right. Okay, mechanisms of how things work. Well, we go back and we say, well, the first mechanistic approach was the Newtonian approach. And that's where Newton uh, made the mathematics to calculate the movement of the heavenly sphere. Right. The significance of that is that when he made these calculations, he didn't use energy in the equations or God or spirit. He just used the physical parameters of the measuring of the planet. What's significant is that in the result is that if you can predict the movement of the planet by only measuring the physical parameters, therefore, you know, uh, according to science, you don't need to add any other options. So it says, oh, well, then you can understand the universe by just measuring the physical part. Right. You don't have to. You can say that there's an energy, but it's not relevant because if you can predict it without using energy, then you don't need energy. Exactly. So what Newtonian physics says it's a material thing. Look at the physical parts, adjust them only. Okay. The quantum physics, on the other hand, turned around and reversed the fundamental belief in 1925. Uh, it reversed the conventional Newtonian thing by saying, you know, those particles that you thought were the atoms, were the, la the low physical things, that that was the smallest thing. Well, guess what? Inside the atoms, they're made out of energy. So that the atoms that we were calling physical part particles, in fact, represent energy. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden it says, no, so one, the Newtonian is saying the world is a mechanical place. And the quantum physicists come back and say, no, it's really based on energy. And yet there is a combination where the two come together because just because uh, quantum physics replaced Newtonian physics doesn't mean that Newton's laws were wrong. So there are levels where you can understand the world through a Newtonian eye, and then there are levels where you must really go back and look at the quantum. Yeah. 
like in physics, it seems like the speed determines a lot of what Newton's laws, whether they work or they don't work. Yeah, but that was measuring speed based on physical particles. Okay. Right. It's not based on energy, which has a different whole, you know, realm of speed, which is beyond anything that physical understands. So, mm -hmm. uh, but but so we're, so we're here at this point that says that in our world that we live in, things that are are large in size, and in this case, I would say large, like cells and bigger. Okay. In our physical world. Right. Can be to some degree understood by using the physical laws of Newton. Okay. Right. But when you get down to the level of cells and lower, where you're dealing with molecules and atoms, that's where the quantum realm comes in. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now we go back to allopathic. It says, look, the human body's physical. So what it wants to do is to look at all the big physical things that make it work. The cells make the tissues, and the tissues make the organs, and all that kind of stuff like that. And so when they look at it, all they can see with their blinders on, their Newtonian blinders, are physical things, the molecule. So they look at the human body as a molecular machine, and when it's not working, it would imply the molecules are wrong. Right. And therefore, their vision is, oh, well, if the molecules are not working right, then throw in new molecule. And that's called drugs. <laughs> okay? Right. So they're healing from that mechanistic point of view. Yet, on the other hand, the truth is, the things that really bother us, here's a, this is an important point to me. I should, you know, you're going to edit this. So you have oh, to yeah. Do all this, okay? Yeah, this should be all straightened out. So. Okay, here's, a, here's an important point, is that when we're talking about what medicine does, and, and we say what medicine doesn't do, and, and so we're emphasizing at some point the failures of medicine, Right. we should also emphasize the value of medicine. Exactly. Okay. Medicine has an understanding of the large physical character of the, of the thing, the cells, the tissues and organs more or less, actually, okay? Their, their study of cells is that's where they're off base a bit. But organs, how they work, and tissues, how they work, are, they understand. So the fact is this, if I break or traumatize my physical body, they have an awareness of repairing those physical structures of, like, tissues and organs. Right. They can rebuild tissues, and they can rebuild organs, and transplant organs, and fix bones, and all these things. That's trauma. Okay? Mm -hmm. They do miracles with trauma, and that's where, if, man, if you have a, you know, you get in an accident and break your leg, a chiropractor is not really the most beneficial practitioner in that. Right. right. Okay? So, just, what is medicine? Go for physical trauma. But, now we go, but here's the, uh, the flip side. If something goes wrong that is mediated by a dysfunction in the cellular mechanism, well, that dysfunction in the cellular mechanism is originating at the level of the cell. And the mechanisms that control the expression of the cell transcend us now from the Newtonian world into the quantum world. Right. So if there's something like a cancer, you say, well, cancer is dysfunction. Yeah, but it started within a cell. It didn't get hit with a baseball bat or anything, mm -hmm. you know, like trauma. It started as a function within a cell that something went wrong. Diabetes, something in the, in the molecules of the cell membrane, something's wrong. Uh, Alzheimer's, something in the cytoskeletal structure within the cell, something is wrong. We're talking about cellular level. Right. When it comes to cellular level, we really jump to a different, a different understanding. Now at the level of cells, you really want to know what's going on there. The Newtonian principles break down. Because mm -hmm. that's where we start to enter the realm of energy influences. Yeah, I, I, molecules that make things work are influenced by energy fields, not by baseball bats. Right. So that so when medicine comes to issues that whose origins are at the level of cellular function, they're pretty much lost. And the reason is they're still looking at this as a as a biochemical machine controlled by genes, and therefore something had to be wrong in the mechanical end. And yet they the failure is yeah, but at this level. You also have to look at the energy end. <laughs> the energy is very important down here. So uh, they have no vision of energy because they're Newtonian. I like how they changed the word alternative to complementary. It's actually a little more... Oh, it, yeah, the alternative is uh, like an adversarial. Yeah, it, this okay. is less confrontational, and, and it's actually more truer to the point, too. Absolutely, because what we're going to complement is we're going to put the energy and the matter back together, and then all of a sudden you have an awareness that mm -hmm. you don't have if you only have one or the other. Okay, that's okay. So basically, so it says now that we're entering the quantum world, it says energy fields profoundly influence the structure and function of molecules, which then create.
create the behavior and life of the cell. Right. So all of a sudden it says, yeah, well, then energy fields should be considered. And the answer is, yeah, well, there's lots of evidence that energy fields influence things from electromagnetic fields to other kinds of fields, including prayer. Exactly. And all of a sudden, yeah, but that, that is an energy. It's a mind energy. Everybody's mind is broadcasting frequencies. And that, um, and, and that's been demonstrated by a number of means, that you can read brain frequencies outside of the skull. Uh-huh. And why that's relevant, it says, yeah, then your, your energy frequencies are not contained within your body, but you're like a tuning fork walking down the street, vibrating frequencies.